This is uh, replacing the injectors and the studs on the John Deere 4210. It's a Yanmar engine. Um, I couldn't find the injectors anywhere for this particular model except for John Deere. Uh, this is kind of a journey that uh, had a bunch of boys help me on the roof. And uh, we were loading the shingles and on the roof with the front bucket of this thing. And one of them slipped and uh, no fault of the person uh, put a hole through the hood. Well, the uh, then we got into somebody borrowing it, using um, using it to load salt. They promised, they swore, oh, I'll get it clean, I'll get it clean, I'll get it clean. And I've been fighting this thing ever since. Salt got down in there and just ate everything. Ate the valve cover, the muffler, tailpipe, exhaust manifold, starter. Now it's ate the uh, fuel lines, the injectors. And I got to thinking about this. And uh, I wanted to blame them so bad. But if I had to fix the hood, which was my fault, this would have never happened. So in a moment of humility, I realized that, you know, everybody wants to point the finger, point the blame somewhere else. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. Well, I took a good long look at this, and guess what? Again, if I had to fix the hood... This wouldn't have happened. So, I've started on this little deal. I've got a new valve cover on it. I've got a new uh, exhaust manifold, new muffler, new starter. Got to reuse the tailpipe. And I'm in the process of taking this, these, the fuel lines off and the injectors out. So, I don't know if this will teach you guys anything or not. But, you know, if you learn a trick or two here or there... I've already got two of the lines off, uh, and this middle one is a bear. Maybe this will uh, pass some knowledge along to somebody else that maybe get getting a jam can't afford to to pay for the labor to have this done. This is a three-cylinder Yanmar engine out of the John Deere 4210. It's a 2002, and they've stopped making some parts for it. I had to go online and research it down, and I found the center fuel line bought one used and I got the first and the third one out now I'm working on the center I guess the best thing that I can think about this is is maybe help teach somebody and pass it on a little bit of pecking on a lot of lubricant <coughs> a lot of muscle a little tap a little heat clean up the scale keep going a little leverage <sighs> I am by no means a mechanic I don't want to be don't like to be just to kind of show you how uh, how bad this is, these nuts are both the same size. I got a couple pictures I'm gonna show you guys. Before I lubricated, scrubbed, cleaned, pecked at, put a little heat on. This one down here on the pump, 17. I don't know if you can see that or not. 17 millimeter. This thing's rusted so bad. A 16 is loose. So just because it started out being one size, these are metric. There's times I had to go to SAE just to get down to the next size to get this out. But first part, fuel lines are out. I couldn't find the injectors anywhere for this particular model except for John Deere. Okay, now what I've done is I've double nutted on a stud here, trying to get this to go in. I've got a lot of corrosion on the top of the head in these threads, so they're a little tight. So I'm using a ratchet wrench to put them in. So I can not only see the nut, but I can also see the stud, and I can watch it just to make sure that it's not curling any metal down here against the head, 
so it's not cross threading and it's going in the way it's supposed to. Now you never want to take the threads all the way down into the block. I'll try and shoot a couple pictures. Then you just back your nuts out and I'll just make sure that you don't drop anything down in there. You don't want anything down in there. No, no slivers, no dirt, no nothing. I've already taken the air hose and blown mine out completely. And before I did any of this, I've already done the other two. I wasn't going to bore you with doing all three. Everything that I've seen on the internet and from some of the mechanics that I've talked to, they said go ahead and put a little bit of grease on that and that'll help hold that cone. They call it a washer, but it's or a seal. Give me a paper towel. That'll help hold that on and help get it down in the center of that hole. Um, it's too difficult to get that in. And the trick is, is this cap, I don't know if you can see this or not, has to line up with right here on the injector. There's two flat spots that this goes down in. And it goes in and sets. And this, the return line, has to go in between these two bolts there's there's a knockout right here for this right here in the top of the head so just carefully set that down in there make sure everything lines up make sure you got your flat flat spots here and here on the sides and then you put your two new thrust nuts on there Now the thing of it is, is you got to tighten these down. Um, the manual calls 60 to 78 inch inch pounds of torque. It's a 10 millimeter socket and I'm just using a quarter drive just for the simple fact that it's easier to get in here. And you want to tighten these down together to make sure that you don't get that plate cockeyed. You kind of want to look at the nuts, make sure that they're even, and go by the fill. And that would be it. Now you're going to be ready for your return lines, the, the hose in between each one of the return lines, and then coming off your your pump coming from here to there. You also want to make sure that you don't get anything down in here either. You want to make sure you get that good and clean right here. I'll be doing that in a minute. To help you guys get these injectors out of these Yanmar engines, this is out of a John Deere 4210. Um, I had some corrosion issues as you can tell. Uh, my return lines broken too so what I ended up doing I used a standard uh, O2 sensor socket just so as it slips down it goes over the return line and then this will set on top of the head like so now I went down and I found I took the fuel line with me and matched the thread of the fuel line and if memory serves me, that's a, it's a number 12 by 1.5. There's a correction on that nut. I believe that's a 12 by 1.25 millimeter. And I bought a nut. I bought a nut that fit it. And then I bought a bolt. I welded them together and ground them down to where when you stick them in the socket, it'll turn a little bit. So... Then, I threaded this on top, and let me tell you, they're a bear. As you can tell by all the carbon 
and all the rust that's in these you can see all the rust all right and from that line down to the tip of the injector is buried down inside of the head so that's how much that's how much you got to pull right there from here to the tip of your injector so I just screwed this on there screwed this on there like so then I ran this up inside now on mine the bolt wouldn't fit through so I stuck the socket in my drill press and drilled it out if you've got a standard hand drill and a good sharp bit you'll go you'll you'll be able to do that as well all right then I started stacking washers right on top then I came back with a nut that fits this bolt now this bolt could be anything that you weld to this nut the main thing of it is is I when I did this is I wanted to make sure that I had the full depth inside that nut to thread onto here to get as many threads holding power as possible because let me tell you this was tough getting out all right then I I put it up on there ran this on top I stuck a nut on it now when you start tightening when you start tightening this nut it will actually start drawing that socket up this is still setting on the head and if you need more room after you bring this up undo your nut drop some more washers on it tighten it down again and this will pull it straight up out of your head it worked really well for me um, there was nothing else that I could use I found a couple other online tools um, one of them from Myanmar stated to use a slide hammer the problem with that is working on some of these tractors his gas tank sits over the top you don't have the room but that right there now I did this with my stick welder and you can see where I ground just a little bit to get that in there worked like a champ